So our next talk is by Paul Evans from Daystrom. His title is Integrating Scale-Out NAS uh, into iRODS. Here you go. How's everyone doing out there? Good. Hope I didn't yell too loud. All right. Um, so we've made it this far. I don't intend to talk that much, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm up here because we have a passion about uh, doing really fast file systems. Uh, and I thought I would come talk to you about why we work with iRODs, because iRODs isn't always that fast. Um, why we work with this other technology called RosoFS, and how we're linking them together, um, and why that's important to us, and we, why we think it's important to a lot of the folks out there that need this kind of work. Um, my name is Paul Evans principal architect. Uh, some of you may have met Tyson over there at the table. He tries to make all the, my promises work. Uh, and then he couldn't be here, but uh, Pierre Yvou is a key member, key member, it says so right on the slide, um, for Rozo and has been doing, he's been making a lot of the things happen between Rozo and IROD, so we're really appreciative of him for that. So we have this sort of vision about linking together workflow automation or data automation and some sort of data virtualization layer, which we look to iRODs to be, so that we don't have to care where we've put the data, whether it's in the cloud, whether it's on another continent, or it's in my data center close by. And so we look to couple that together with what we call wicked fast storage, because we just like to go fast. It's more fun that way. And we do work with a lot of larger clients and a lot of M&E clients who really do need to go fast, so that's sort of where some of that's driven from. Um, not here to talk about the workflow automation, really about the link between data virtualization and wicked fast storage. And when we drew this up a long time ago at this point, um, there was this thing on the other side of the virtualized namespace that has always been a problem, and that is that orange line for direct access. Because if you have a client and it needs to go really fast with a single stream, like a movie, um, or some kind of sequence, then going through the iRODS layer um, either most of the time breaks the application because the application wants to see some kind of standard interface, um, or it breaks the application because iRODS in the typical mechanisms aren't fast enough. So we want to give direct access, and that was something that was sort of conceivable in the older days, where you could make direct updates into a storage resource, and then have iRODs pick those updates up. But that essentially was walking the file system, and there are problems with that, of course. So, of course, this talk is about focusing on the direct access. First, we don't want to do tree walks. Um, Tree walks are slow, and they don't scale. Once we get to billions of files, it's hopeless. And with very active file systems, the changes kill us. Um, and functionally, they're just kind of slow anyway. So we don't want to do tree walks. So what do we want? Um, so we focused generally for the past few years on scale-out designs. We wanted efficient data protection. I'll cover that in a second. Um, we wanted high data integrity. We wanted platform independence. Some call that software-defined something. Um, common protocols like SMB and NFS friendly, don't have to install a client, but hey, if you got a faster client, great. Um, we wanted direct access to metadata. We didn't want to have to go and walk a tree, um, and of course we wanted it wicked fast. So we all know what that looks like, right, when you, when you go design that? Right? So we did what we think find um, is sort of our unicorn file system. Um, so Roso FS is out of France, um, and it gives for us that speed, that scale, and the flexibility to deploy where we want. Um, for those of you who tend to stay above the storage layer and don't pay attention to RAID and erasure coding and all those other things, I'll just do this quick reminder or overview. So you can store data in a protected manner either by having multiple copies of it, so mirrors or replicas. We could do parity RAID. Parity RAID's great. It's fast. It doesn't really scale these days. It's kind of hard to maintain at this scale as well. Uh, and then there's what we call read solomon based erasure coding, or classical erasure codes, which are primarily algebra-based. And even if you shove them into hardware like um, Intel did, it's still not the most efficient way to encode and then decode data, especially if there are erasures in it, if chunks are missing. So 
where we ended up with is basically a derivative of a radon transform, which is what Rose OFS is built on top of. So a radon transform is, I'm just going to say it's a lot like a Sudoku puzzle. And so you've got a grid, you've got ways you can look at the grid, and you can just calculate very simply using addition and subtraction at the vector level. Um, and to a CPU, that's very easy to do. And so what Rozo does for us is combine that really fast performance in a protection algorithm, so we don't have to rely on slow erasure coding. This is kind of a different form of erasure coding that's very fast. They have a really optimized metadata layout, and they give us direct access to it. And so that combines into what we call a vector-based data protection with, it's just a fast file system, okay? So what does that look like when we build something up? Just so you can wrap your head around it. So classic four node design that we'll, we'll put out for a number of customers. Um, each node has disks or flash. Some of the nodes handle the metadata. Some of the nodes handle other things. Um, it gives us the speed. It gives us the commonality of access because SMB and NFS work great. Um, it scales because it can use whatever networking you want. It's RDMA enabled. <clears throat> and then we get this kind of performance. So over 100 gig link, generally for, for the applications that we're doing, the applications are happy enough to go over seven gigabytes per second. I think that's, uh, yeah. And so that's the kind of speed that we're after. But, oh, and then it does native availability, so if you have losses, it keeps running. This is not a Rozo pitch, I'm sorry. Um, and a web browser. Yeah, this is the slide we were after. So how does this thing work with iRods? Um, so remember I talked about tree walks. So the Rozo team did uh, some tests recently um, to scan the sample 18 million, data, million file data set. Um, was kind of long. I know the hardware they were on, and it was pretty old, so that's why it took so long. Um, but when they did a direct scan using their tool that just talks directly to the metadata, good reduction, down to 57 seconds. And then when they said, all right, now just show me the changes, right? This is the change log we're looking for so we can push that into IROTS. So that goes down to a quarter of a second, right? That's going to scale very nicely for us. And they haven't even begun to do the optimizations around that. That's just sort of out of the box what they do. Great. So now we've got speed and we've got direct metadata access. How do we get that into IROTS? That's been the, the challenge of late. Um, some of you may know that there's work um, to connect Lustre into IROTS so that the ICAC can get updated automatically. So we're pursuing that path somewhat. Um, and thank you, um, Mr. James, for pointing us in the right direction. I don't know if he's here. There's a really bright light over there. OK. So, oh, there you are. Thanks. So th the plan of record, because we haven't, we can't update IRODs fast enough yet. So we're going we're gonna to go that direction, which is to leverage zero MQ to pass messages into that layer, which you're then going to fan out in parallel streams and do updates across multiple ICATs and multiple backend database servers, right? Right. So that's the plan. And I hope to be here next year telling you how fast it goes or publish something so Jason can put it on the blog. But what we've got so far is a fast file system that can spit out via an API all the changes that we want. And we have a team that is working and should be finished in the next six weeks on it, they think, um, to update the ICAT so that we can have that sort of grand vision of we can have direct access to a file system and we can get the full speed of it. And every time we're making a change, that's being picked up and echoed into IRODs, running through the policy engine to some degree, right? Um, so we pick up all the policies uh, that would apply um, and we're not falling out of sync. Don't have to do tree walks, don't have the downsides. So we get the performance, we get the synchronization, and we can go global at this point. So that's really what I was here to say. And 
one question I have is, does anybody have this kind of a focus or need? Because I've heard change log brought up at least three or four times in the conference so far. So one, anyone else? Ah, thanks. All right, I gotta go rustle the bushes a little bit to get more of this need, but we find that it's important for organizations that are trying to go global, have multiple sites, and have crazy policies around the data. It's a lot of M&E for us, so. Any questions? I'll go get it. No, 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 no. This is for the people at home. Uh, regarding the changes, yeah, we we can poll as infrequently or as often as we want. So we get to define the burstiness. Um, when there's a lot of bursts into the file system, mm -hmm. is really where it will come. Um, so if there are changes going on in the file system, those are simply going to be echoed in. We'll buffer some of it, and I believe that there's some efficiency that's being handled um, at a layer above us within the IRODs to bulk update things. Okay, yeah, there's an... Yeah, so he's referring to the work that um, we've put into the, the listener, the, the, the uh, what do we call that, connector for, for the luster that work that Justin did so far, um, where we're bulk updating the uh, catalog, so we're, we're coalescing those those edits, those changes into something that, uh, so we don't have to hit that catalog as often. I guess one question I would have, and you walked away from the, with the microphone, but what would be your concern around burstiness? Question, wait, questions are going the other way now? Hold on. <laughs> I had a thing going. Let's see. Yeah, you'll have to pardon me. I'm dragging out my storage hardware background stuff here real quick, but uh, I have no problem about the burstiness, but if you're talking about trying to take all that ingest at speed, there are some tricks you can do with intermediate caching strategies uh, that work very, very well, provided the traffic does have a bursty pattern. If you're getting high speed, steady state, it becomes very, very difficult to do caching. You know, anybody who's built CPUs knows this. <laughs> so. But uh, I'll catch up with you here in a few minutes and, and outline what I'm thinking. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm trusting the IROD's team to buffer the burstiness for us. Yes, that's what we're going to do. Uh, I have a question <clears throat> about the metadata. So are, are, uh, in, how, how do you store the metadata? Are, are you storing it in a, a database or, or just... In, in file in the file system or uh, so the metadata is held in a separate file system base location than the main um, file system itself that's presented to applications and users um, so that's always protected and hidden away the layout is I mean, it it's sort of a file system unto itself so it's not a database uh, and part of the efficiency is being able to determine um, which parts of the tree have been updated and which ones haven't. So that way we can get very fast response. Do, do you have some sort of a, a timestamp-based indexing on, on the metadata to, to achieve that kind of efficiency? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, let's thank Paul. And, and whoa. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to be fair to Mark. We are talking about doing the same thing with Store Next. Ah, good. <laughs>